Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this code blog, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how I handle testing using Jest, React Testing Library, and Apollo. Uh, now, I have a new series out on React Testing Library, React Testing in general. And some of this stuff, uh, specifically about Apollo, is not covered in that. So I did want to give a little bit of a video here to explain how exactly I work with mock data when I'm testing my components in Apollo. Now, the setup is pretty slick. So let's check it out here. Uh, as you can see, this is the playlist.test.js. And what this component is doing is really just grabbing a list of playlists. Now, uh, I'll have my test code over here and I'll have my actual code over here. I hope this is easy to understand. I'm using, again, React Testing Library and Jest for this. Now, after each, I just simply do a cleanup. Um, it's a React testing library to clean up everything out of the DOM. And then next, I do this thing where I build the request itself, okay? So when you're using these new features from Apollo with testing, what you need to do is if you're using not the higher order components, but if you're using the render prop version of these components, what you need to do is basically give the mocked uh, provider you need to give it both what the query is that the component is going to be running as well as what the data needs to expect back. And so I've gone ahead and I'm actually importing my query from a GraphQL file. And as you can see here, this query is nice and simple. Playlist query. I don't know why I didn't like that one. Uh, I'm getting total playlist, the user, uh, just sort of this sort of stuff, right? And so I'm importing the same query that I'm using in the real component which is a big deal here because it means that I, I never have any discrepancies. If I'm changing the component query, uh, like if let's say I wanna add some more data to this query or something like that, if I wanna subtract some data from it, right? Um, then that data is going to be represented in both the, co like the code in the test as well as the component itself. Okay, so I'm using the same exact GraphQL query here, the same exact query, and I'm using the playlist component. Now, the main, the big parts of this come in through the mocked provider, which comes in from React Apollo test utils. And again, this isn't necessarily a tutorial in mock provider or anything, but what we're simply doing is I'm first creating the request object and I'm saying, hey, the query in the request is going to be the playlist query, okay? It's the same query that we're using. Next, I write my test. My test is async, and what I do is I first get some data back. Now, this mock man thing here is just a little bit, it's just like a little wrapper I wrote, okay? So what we're doing here is basically running this query and getting back some data. Now, I'll show you the mock man in a second. It's really super simple. It's, it's, it's kind of stupid, but uh, really what we're doing is just running that GraphQL query and getting back an object of mocked data. In fact, if we go ahead and we were to console log this mock data out, you'll be able to see, even though it's specified mock data, it is mock data. It's not coming from a database. This is key because I don't have to have a database to this test run or anything like that. I don't have to hit an API. It's uh, really fast, okay? So you can see that my mock data comes back and I have a bunch of hello world here. It's an array of two separate playlists as well as a fake user object as well as a loading. So that's really nice. That's really super duper nice. And all we're simply doing with that data is throwing it into the result of the request. So I have this mocked provider, which is again, a component that comes from React Apollo test utils. And this accepts an array of mocks. And I'm having inside of here an object with the request and the result. Now, the cool thing is, is that the result is coming in as data that's mocked from the actual query itself. If we were to do this other ways, we might actually have to craft this object ourselves. And then, you know, maybe there's a disconnect there. With this, I'm actually hitting the same uh, GraphQL query, getting back the same data, and then having that as the result. Now you need this add a type name is equal to false uh, for this to work correctly. Uh, to be honest, I think it's just so that the data result matches what the expected mocked provider result is. I'm I'm not 100% positive. Um, and I think it has to do with the package that I'm using to import GraphQL files in general. 
So you can see I'm simply just wrapping my mocked my app in this mocked provider where I have the request that was defined as a query with the query and the result with the data that is coming in from the actual query. Again, I'll show you this mock main in a second. Then I'm simply just rendering this with the memory router because this is using React router. And uh, again, here we have playlists is equal to playlists. Um, playlist comes from the data object itself. Although to be honest, I'm not sure if that needs to be in here. It doesn't even look like that's a uh, desired prop. Let's go ahead and actually that might have been left over from before. Let's go ahead and do this like this. Let's save this and see if these tests fail. Hey, they don't fail. Uh, before I was using the higher order components and I was exporting uh, the app out or this playlist out without the higher order component in it. So therefore I needed to grab the data, the mock data, and pass it in as a prop to get this test to work correctly. But now since the um, data comes in via the mock provider, it looks like everything's good. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm simply just having this mock provider uh, allows us to render this component that uses a query with a playlist query and allows this thing to render correctly. Now I am checking to make sure the search bar uh, is there, the tag filter is there, and then I wait for a single playlist to show up, and then I get all of the playlists. And then I check to make sure that there is as many as I'm expecting to be there, as in, hey, this thing just works, right? Uh, as long as this data is coming in and it's outputting individual playlist items, then I am pretty psyched, right? Uh, because all of these other components are tested themselves. So check it out. This is pretty cool. Um, let's show you the mock mang thing that I have here. Again, this is a dumb name uh, for something that is really simple. The mock mang is where I just throw a bunch of mocking stuff. Let me collapse some of this stuff. Collapse. So you can see it better. Okay. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm defining some default data for mocks. Otherwise, the default data that comes in is just going to be a bunch of hello world stuff. I kind of want it to look a little bit more like my data. So I'm saying, hey, IDs should look like this. Products should look like that. Orders should look like that. Users should look like that. Um, next, I'm running this add mock functions to schema functions where I pass in the schema as well as the mocks. So the mocks are this mocks object here and the schema or schema or whatever you say up top here is actually coming in from the real type depths. Now, this is sort of the benefit of having a shared repo between the client and server is that I'm able to access all of the type depths that I have on the, the server as well as the client. And I'm able to say, hey, use all of these type depths and use make an ex executable schema. Use that schema down here, add mock functions to schema. And then I created this mock main function, which is really dumb. It's a simply just a wrapper around the GraphQL function, but all it does is take an arguments and a query. Okay. Uh, I did this to simplify the parameters. You'll see that down here in our GraphQL, it takes a schema query location, null, null, and then args. Like I didn't want to have to write this every time. So <laughs> I made this, this little mock, uh, mock main wrapper around it to just accept a query and an arguments. And then I simply just have a result from running this GraphQL query. So I pass it in the schema, I pass it in the query, and I pass it in the arguments, and then I set data as loading to false, and then I return the data itself. Um, this is all fake data. So what it does here is it basically goes out, checks the schema, uh, sees what that information should be, creates some mock data, and then sends it back. And so this function is really super simple. Again, the, the meat of it is just this GraphQL function here. You can see more about this if you look up the add mock functions to schema uh, on Apollo Docs, the Apollo's Docs. This is pretty documented pretty well. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm using the mock provider to provide some uh, results and query for the query that's run inevitably inside of this component. And I'm building the request with a query and a playlist query. And then I'm grabbing the data via my mock main thing that goes off and grabs fake data. And then I'm setting the data to the result. And that's just here.
if you wrap everything in this sort of mock provider with this stuff, when it actually renders your component that uses a query, it's going to check to make sure that the data coming back is supposed to be and that everything is exactly how it should be. And then it will render everything as if it really works. So this is how I do testing with Apollo queries, react testing library, and, uh, just here. I don't have any of this code available on a gist or something like that. Um, I, I could make some of it available. The mock main, the key here is that you do need a, the schema, the type defs, you need the type defs for this thing to work. Uh, otherwise you're just going to want to have some fake data in here. You can mock your fake data any sort of way you'd like. So as long as your data is coming back as the actual result of the request, the reason I do it this way is simply so I can use the same query in both the test as well as the application. And this works really, really well for me. Now, another cool thing about this is that I can use this mock main anywhere I'd like. Let's say I'm testing a component that doesn't have an Apollo query in it, that it has the data being passed down into it. I can just fire up the mock main and then pass in the query, anything that I want get that data and then pass it in as a prop. So again, it works really, really super well for that. Um, so check it out again. This is it. The magic in here is all in mocked provider as well as in the add mock functions to schema. So if you want to add any of this stuff to your own code base, again, this stuff is all a little custom here. So what I, I would want you to do is, uh, to head over to the documentation in Apollo to look for these sort of items and figure out how it makes sense in sort of your own repo. But this is how I'm doing it. And like I said, it works really well for me. And I hope that provide a little bit of insight into not only the code base of level up tutorials, but how you can do testing with real mock data and actually load up these components with fake data so that you don't have to hit an API or you don't have to wait for that sort of thing to happen. And you can still get the validity and uh, all sort of benefits of testing your code to know that it's working with the real query, real data, real component, all that good stuff. So if you want to learn more about testing, check out react testing library and check out react testing for beginners. It's a new series on level up tutorials just came out this week and, uh, you can become a level up pro. Uh, you can save 25% if you sign up for the year uh, or 19 bucks a month. You get access to this series along with a new premium series every single month. Uh, no announcement on the next series yet, so you'll have to just wait and see. But React Testing for Beginners is brand new. If you want to check this thing out before you buy it, you can actually come over to, let's just go to the tutorials page, and then you can just go to React Testing for Beginners, and you can watch the first five episodes of this thing for free and uh, see if you like it. If you like it, purchase it or become a pro, uh, sign up for the year, save 25%. So as always, this is Scott with level up tutorials. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to hear how you are testing your data components using Apollo react, whatever, or even if you're using things like redux or whatever, I want to know how people are testing, especially working with their data. Cause that was one of the biggest hurdles for me is how do I get this data uh, into the component and how do I do it in a real world sort of way? So I'm not just like writing an object full of data, passing it into the component and then calling it a day. So check it out. As always, this is Scott with level up tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.